Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Out of Spec podcast. I am Francie, and I'm joined today by Kyle, who you know very well. And today we are talking about the big announcement with VW and Nax. Well, to be clear, there's no big like official announcement yet, That's but true. I did talk to Pablo Desi, who's CEO of Volkswagen North America or USA, big wig inside the group, and yeah, had a one-on-one chat with him about the port, so we're going to get into all of that. Excuse the new podcast setup. For those of you who don't know, Francie has joined the Out of Spec team full-time to do a whole bunch of podcasts for you starting towards the end of the month. And so we're, we are pre-recording a bunch today, but we wanted to get this one up right away because it's kind of cool news. Right. We're making do. So uh, I was in Germany for the last uh, three weeks, something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, we had the opportunity to film a bunch of Volkswagens. I drove the new refresh ID4. I drove the ID7. We filmed the ID2 GTI concept, which was really cool. I filmed the IDX, which is like a juiced up ID7. So we did a bunch of Volkswagen stuff. It's the big German motor show. We also filmed a bunch of BMW and Mini stuff and Audi stuff and Mercedes stuff as well. So, you know, but but of course, Volkswagen had a lot to share this year. So we had a lot of Volkswagen content from this trip, which was really fun. And part of that whole thing was at the Munich Motor Show, Volkswagen had like a house. It wasn't really a house. It was like an office building with a pavilion where they brought all the media, all internal contacts to get together and to talk and share the cars. And that's where we filmed most of our videos. Mm -hmm. Part of that experience was actually uh, some U.S. media. I think there was only four of us from the U.S. or five of us from the U.S. who attended uh, this this roundtable talk, if you will, with Pablo Desi. and, and which was great because I, I knew everyone who was there, which was awesome. And we're all kind of on the same wavelength, which is we need charging to work. We've all reviewed the Volkswagen EVs and things like that. So, you know, if we, if we look at charging in Europe from Volkswagen AG's perspective, you can drive an electric car anywhere across Germany. We, I just did three weeks of it, never encountered a major charging problem. It was all not perfect, but 98% great. Really? Just today, coming back to the U.S., we were out charging the Rivian uh, just down the street here in Denver. And holy crap, it was a pain in the ass. It took us like 15 minutes just to get charging at an EVgo station. So Volkswagen in the U.S. partnered, of course, with Electrify America, which is part of Volkswagen Group, Mm -hmm. uh, as their main charging provider, their main DC on-the-road charging provider. And I think everyone watching this show, you guys understand how honestly uh, poor the charging experience has been as a whole with Electrify America. That's not to say every session is bad or every session is perfect. It's just to say, I think we can all agree that there are far more negative charging experiences than there need to be. You've done a bunch with EA. What's your rough impression? My rough impression of how it is to charge on their network? Yeah. Uh, yeah, run into some issues. I mean, you had to help me troubleshoot when I took the Rivian on a road trip, but it was also my first EV road trip. So there was, I'm sure, user error, but also it became a norm for me that there might be a little bit of a hiccup, whether it was how fast it was charging or actually initiating the charge or the charger being up and running. Um, so I did, unfortunately, become a little bit habituated to the fact that it's difficult to charge. Yeah. And it shouldn't be that way. In Europe, it's not that way. I mean, you kind of, when a charger doesn't work in Europe, you go, why? That's weird. In the US, you go, oh my God, I got a great charging session. Let's celebrate it, which shouldn't be the case. And so for the charging infrastructure over there in Europe, is it, you know, is there a monopoly or there, how many different charging networks are there? And then what is you know, the high powered charging that they do. Yeah. There's good and bad. Uh, In general, there are just more charging locations. There's a higher density of DC charging uh, per electric vehicle. I would say Um, almost every exit off the highway has high power charging. And I'm talking specifically Europe because there are other parts of, uh, sorry, specifically Germany, because Mm -hmm. there are other parts of Europe that aren't as well populated. I'll be in Portugal later this week, next week, something like that. Um, And uh, I don't think their network's as good as Germany, from what I'm hearing. 
Uh, either way, yeah, there's Ionity, which pretty much worked out all the bugs. There's ENB Vey, which is awesome. But then there's stations like Eon that we are now calling E Off because they really don't work that great mm. in my experience. And also, we'll do other podcasts on activating chargers over there. But the big reason we're bringing this up is when you talk to the big wigs at Volkswagen Group, the ones in Germany, in Wolfsburg at Volkswagen, their own experiences using electric vehicles are very different to what the owners of electric vehicles are experiencing in the U.S. with Electrify America. Now, we have data on this. We started a whole company around charger rating, if you will. It's called Rate Your Charge. So we get thousands of check-ins from our viewers, our users, our followers on Twitter that are constantly going to stations across the country, not just Electrify America, but ChargePoint, EVgo, uh, Green Lots, which is now, who owns Green Lots now? Is it Blink? But then like Blink and SEMA Connect just mm-hmm. merged. Like all these crazy things are going on in the U.S., And we've just seen that the Tesla supercharger network has had far better experiences charging cars, even on the Magic Dock, where they can charge any vehicle, than the so-called, quote-unquote, public networks, the ones that can charge any electric car. And the two big ones of those are, of course, EVgo and EA. Electrify America um, really was the first to build out a nationwide, countrywide charging infrastructure for non-Tesla electric vehicles. Tesla was smart, put in their own network, built the best hardware, maintains it wonderfully, and gives a great experience to Tesla owners. So the big problem in the US right now is if you buy a Volkswagen ID4, which is the only ID product currently on sale, um, or, or you know even a Mach-E or other ones of these, uh, you know any other electric car, you're at a huge competitive disadvantage as the seller of that vehicle than you are someone who could be looking at a Model 3 or a Model Y if mm-hmm. you're selling one of those because it comes down to not only is the car nicer, does it drive better, is the sound system better, you can compare all these things, but the new main comparison, at least for us and I think many of our viewers are, can you actually go places with this car easily? Right. And I think we've come to the point with CCS where you can get around I've driven across the country many times on CCS, Mm -hmm. but it's a pain in the ass. There's no way around it. No. Yeah. And you're definitely investigating as you go, but not everyone is so curious along the way and they just need to get from point A to point B. And in a Tesla, it is very different versus relying on the other public networks. Totally. And it's not because the cars are really that different because they have access to the Tesla supercharger network. So Ford famously announced that they were going to be putting a Tesla port on their car, Mm -hmm. that they're going to be supporting the North American charging standard, which is what that Tesla port is. Right. And in exchange, part of this deal with Tesla, they will get access to a large portion of the Tesla supercharger network. Not every supercharger, but over 12,000 and growing. So that's cool because now you can buy a Mustang Mach-E And in 2024, which is just around the corner, you'll be provided an adapter where you can go to over 12,000 Tesla superchargers and have a seamless, easy charging experience. Because part of that deal also includes Tesla and Ford working together to sort out interoperability before the cars are allowed on the network so you know it's going to work great. You have the hardware that's constantly maintained by Tesla technicians in each area, and you have an abundance of chargers where we typically see three or four Electrify America stations, you'll see 10, 20, 40, 80 Tesla superchargers. Mm -hmm. There's a site in Quartzsite, Arizona, that I think now has close to 100 superchargers and then four EA stations, two of which last time I were there were completely offline. So this is just setting the stage for the problem. A lot of our viewers know this. I sat down with Pablo DC, who I expect to understand that there's a problem with the networks out there. There's a, you know, certainly the two issues are there's not enough stations. The second issue is the stations that are there are not working perfectly, or at least a percentage of them aren't. I don't know what that exact percentage is. And so I have some of my questions here that I've specifically asked him and then Volkswagen specific responses that I saw, thought I would share with everyone. Yeah, definitely. So they, you were invited to ask these questions and they were just free for all Yeah, Pablo was super cool. I mean, first of all, he's a great guy. I mean, I've done some other things with him in the past and like he's just super cool, down to earth, understands his product, huge enthusiast, like a great guy to run the company, I think. 
um, but also maybe not as well versed on like the EV stuff as other executives that I've I've spoken to. And I really think it would do a lot of the Volkswagen Group uh, employees a lot of you know help and eye opening to just go on a road trip. Like Definitely. Jim Farley took that F one fifty on a road trip, the Lightning all around the West Coast. I think Pablo needs to do that. I'd love to go with him. We could film a whole video. That would yeah. be epic. Invite. Yes. That, there's the invite right there. <laughs> we'll Come grab on. two ID fours and we'll just road trip and he can see what the experience of his customers are like charging on the road. It should be a requirement. I think for anyone working in any sort of at the EV charging networks or at any OEM making EVs to get them at least in a car for a little bit and then to a charger and charging, even if it's a one case one day. Yeah. Just trip. to like, here's a car, go charge it right. and let us know your thoughts. Yeah. And was it easy? Cause yes. with a Tesla, you just back in, plug it in, walk away. Right. Volkswagen ID four still does not have plug in charge on electrify America, which hmm. is crazy. A Volkswagen car on a Volkswagen charging network does not have ISO 1511 8-2 plug and charge capability. This is insane. Anyway, I asked him, this is my verbatim question. We're sitting around a few journalists around and I said, when will Volkswagen adopt the North American charging standard port and gain access to the Tesla supercharging stations to av- avoid the continued poor charging experiences Volkswagen owners are constantly, or excuse me, consistently having with Electrify America? That question is rooted in fact. I've taken ID4 on a trip uh, and had poor charging experiences. We also, I've also had good charging experiences, but it is almost consistent that if you take a long enough trip, you'll find an issue somewhere. Yeah. And typically it doesn't take long. And sometimes these issues are terrible. I mean, we've seen everything from ID4s catching on fire from charging on some of these, net, these uh, plugs. I think we've seen two of those. It's not very common, but we have seen it happen. And we've also seen the more common situations of just derated charging, failed sessions, uh, lines at chargers, things like this. Mm-hmm. So uh, Volkswagen's official response to this question. You ready for it? Yes, please. We are continuing to explore the North American charging standard option. That's the big one. Continuing to explore. Which means my interpretation of this is they've already opened up the conversation with Tesla My understanding within the group, this is just contextually, is uh, Volkswagen Group, of course, has Porsche, Audi, Volkswagen, Ducati, uh, Lamborghini, Bentley, it goes on and on. Um, My understanding is Porsche has really gotten frustrated with this public charging experience, and they've been pushing the Tesla, um, you know, North American charging standard issue for the group. Now, that's just what some Germans executives told me, just on background information, roughly. I won't say who said that, or because sure. I honestly don't know who they were. Kind but, of makes sense. Porsche being premium, wanting a premium experience for their drivers. I think they're just frustrated. I think we can all say everyone's frustrated with this. And so continuing with that, they said they're continuing to explore the North American charging standard option. With regards to Electrify America, it is investing heavily in the network. So Volkswagen's continuing to support EA, including updating equipment at more than 300 stations and continuous software updates to improve performance. Okay, so let's just look at that really quick. The new stations that Electrify America are installing are having almost more problems, my anecdotal impression, than the old stations are. Why do you think so? I, I don't know why. I think they they bid for cost. They, uh, For example, the, there's four stations up in Loveland, Colorado, right by my house, up the road. And last time I was there, uh, I was getting derated sessions down to 40 kilowatts after five minutes on two of the three new stations out there. Hmm. The third station I tried actually failed session midway through just on that particular visit. So you plug in your Rivian, you get 200 kilowatts, you know, ripping along great. Five minutes go by, boom, you're down to 40. And that could be a temperature sensor in the Huber Schooner cable. They're just using really garbage, you know, suppliers in that case. Huber Schooner is responsible for a large percentage of failed or derated charging sessions in America, really poor quality, uh, just that particular high power charging cable. And, um, you know, it's not the experience you need to have. And these are the brand new units. It got really cold last winter and the stations just wouldn't work. Just the BTC, yeah, completely froze over. And w- that was cool. That video did really well on our channel, over a million views, like it, almost instantly. 
And actually, I spoke to some of the BTC guys about it uh, just a few months ago. I was at a Charin conference, and they said they flew from wherever they were, South Korea, U.S. They had engineers fly from all over the place to that station the next day to figure out what was going on. Because of your video? Because of the video. And they said, we actually found problems that they never found in testing, which tells me they didn't do enough testing. Right. And enough temperature testing. Right. So this is crazy. <laughs> it is crazy because if we're talking about, I mean, obviously not just sustainability in the environmental sense, but the sustainability of setting up a network that's going to actually match the kind of EV count that we want on the road. Why skimp on anything? Yeah. Or build your own hardware. Like that's the thing that I don't understand that Electrify America didn't do because early on they were tasked, obviously punished in a sense to build out this network. They had to, they had a time frame. They had to go out, they had to buy from suppliers. The hardware was really garbage. I totally sympathize with the early days of constructing this network. But recently, you know, th this is five years ago now, something like this. They could have designed, spec, and built their own hardware by now. Rivian did it with their Adventure Network chargers. I know because Michael Rosenblatt was in charge of that project, and he's now at EA. So this is good news, actually. We'll get to that in a little bit. But they did everything in like 18 months, and they built their own chargers. And Rivian Adventure Network chargers don't have 100% uptime, but it's pretty close. It's been pretty amazing. So let's continue. Uh, they also continued with saying the company has also appointed new leadership, including CEO and VP of technology. So that's Rob Barossa and Michael Rosenblatt, both of which I know very well. Um, I think Rob's the right guy to run the company. I think Michael's the right guy to run the tech. He built the Rivian Adventure Network chargers from the ground up, led that team. And they claim they remain committed to quality and customer experience. I'm not doubting that they want quality and customer experience. Michael's brand new. He hasn't had the time yet to really work on the company. Uh, Rob Barossa has been at EA for a while. Previously, he has been in the EV charging industry for years. I mean, uh, involved at AeroVironment back in the day. Like, he knows what needs to happen. Mm -hmm. The problem is, like, this is almost such a big ship and in such a deep hole that, like, you can't just, like, flip it around instantly. Um so, so I think I continued and said that Pablo referenced data gathered by Electrify America. When I was talking to him, he said, well, the data we receive from Electrify America is showing that, you know, the majority of sessions are good. And one thing Electrify America has never done is open up about their data. Do they qualify a good charging session as one that's charging a car? If it's getting one kilowatt, does that classify as a good session instead of when the car is asking for 250? We don't know. We don't know how they calculate their data. So I said, Pablo referenced data gathered by Electrify America, but we believe, as in me, that many of the metrics shared by EA are misleading. I truly believe that. I mean, we we have not seen them open up about it. Uh, John Volker did a piece recently as well saying they haven't opened up about it. We've asked many times. Um, it's almost worth not asking anymore. They won't say how they qualify uptime. Um but I would say there's certainly so many ways you can skew data because on our data on rate your charge, they have more bad check-ins as a percentage, typically on a month by month and a week by week basis than any network in the US. So I asked, is Volkswagen gathering customer data either through the cars directly or through other means to verify and or audit the uptime and reliability status being shared by Electrify America? So the point I was trying to get across to Pablo in this case was, yeah, you're making a lot of decisions based off of data. Is that good data? You know, like is the data from EA what you're trusting or do you want to audit that? Maybe just get a second opinion. You know, you have all the cars out on the road. The cars will tell you what they're getting. Why don't you gather some stuff from them? And I know Volkswagen's very privacy conscious, so I don't know if they would do that. But there's other ways where you can audit the performance of the network. And Volkswagen's official response to this is Electrify America is a trusted company and we are confident in the integrity of their data. To me, it sounds a little bit like blind confidence. They're just saying, ah, they're part of the group. We have to trust them. So we're just going off their data. They continue by saying they also provide reports to regulatory agencies on a number of network metrics. They don't say which regulatory industries or what metrics they're providing and how they're gathered. One of the things that comes to mind, of course, is if a station has a busted handle on it, a physical problem, and it never gets plugged into a car, 
how do you know that that station isn't working from a back end review standpoint? Because if it's never plugged into a car, it never has a chance to fail. So I've seen many EA stations where I plug in and nothing happens. In EA's mind, is that a perfectly working charger? Because the reports, the charger claims it's online. We've also seen countless reports of app inaccuracies where we get to a station that says it's working and we plug in and it's derated, even though it didn't say it was, or it's not working. We've seen it the other way around where sometimes the app will say the station's in use and there's no car there and you're still able to charge or it's broken and it works. So it's not matching up with your real life experience. Right. So are they taking the data that the user is shown in the app, which we have, you know, at least you know, th- I don't know how many we have, but a ton of data on app inaccuracies on EA. Are they taking that same data they're sharing with the user and then basing their network metrics off of this? I'm not surprised that they don't want to share this data. No, of course they don't want to share. And and the thing is, we haven't even asked for like, what specific data are we looking for? No, but asking how you're measuring, you know, key metrics about success and how Volkswagen would consider it. Yeah, so I think... Uh, there's two things to this response and this questionnaire that I did with Volkswagen. There's, there's some good and there's some bad. The good is Volkswagen recognizes there's enough of a problem and enough of a competitive sales disadvantage to selling a car without a North American charging standard port to gain access to the better supercharged network to where they're pretty much saying that they're looking into doing this. I mean, their exact quote is, um, we are continuing to explore the NACS option. Which means, okay, they're going to have a NAX port at some point. You almost can't sell a car in this country without a NAX port is it, my take. Just figuring it out, I would say. I mean, that's what they said in mid midsummer was that they were considering. Sure, everyone's considering. Right. And we've seen so many brands already go to it. Mm-hmm. It doesn't mean they won't be able to use EA because EA is installing NAX ports. Right. It also, EVgo is installing NAX ports. It's just going to become the connector for our country. It's a better connector. Everyone's going to it. We may as well do it. But the problem has never been the connector. It's been the reliability of the charging uh, network that the company says you should use. The cars literally come with free charging for Electrify America. You send them there. And they have a poor experience. So I think, again, the one side of this is really good that they understand there's enough of a problem that they're thinking about, you know, changing the port and gaining access to the supercharger network. The other side of the situation is quite disappointing, where they're just relying on the data from EA. I know for a fact Porsche isn't. I know for a fact Porsche goes out, they do their own testing. We've met some of the Porsche guys out just testing chargers on drives. And we know they're really committed to like understanding the data that they're gathering, that their customers are getting. Whereas Volkswagen seems to just be, well, we're kind of being told it's all good. Pablo mentioned a few times when I was talking to him that, you know, all the new stations are going to solve the problems. But then I had to inform him that I'm running into more and more problems with the new Signet and BTC units compared with the older ABB units that are in the ground. And he was like, oh, wow. And you could just see the look of defeat when I when I told him that. He's just like, oh, you know, like, why do we have to keep talking about charging? Because it's not sparkling like it is in Germany yet. Yeah, true. Like the Volkswagen AG guys and across the group, they're like, oh, charging's great. What are you talking about? Yeah, because in that's their all market, they see. Yeah, it's wonderful. Right. So I, I invite any automaker who wants to go on a road trip to make a video with us. Let's go on a road trip. Let's share what we find in real time. Let's not call the companies ahead and say we're doing this thing. Let's not send gas cars ahead like our Secretary of Energy did or whatever to yep. block the stations. Don't Let's, need to ice out the stations. Don't ice out the stations. Let's just do this for real. Let's show the current state of the network. It's what our out-of-spec motoring channel has been doing for five years on the CCS network. We've shown where it's at. The the best way to a customer improved experience is joining the North American Charging Standard plus Tesla contract, which is a really simple, I think like two or three page contract. It's nothing fancy. Um, Volkswagen, of course, is a very conservative company, but so is Mercedes and they've done it. Right. I I have a feeling that just one day, of course, it's going to be everyone. Yeah, of course, it'll be everyone. But great to see uh, Volkswagen still considering adding Nax. I'm excited about that. Slightly disappointed in some of the responses from them and the fact that they are not outwardly saying this is a major problem for our drivers. Of course, most drivers should charge at home, but you can't buy an electric car if you can't go out and drive. Case in point, 
uh, Alyssa's sister, Michaela, mm-hmm. had a Volkswagen ID4, one of the cars we're talking about here. Mm-hmm. Literally owned one, bought it. We made a whole video and we haven't posted it yet, but she just traded it in for a gas car. She was so frustrated with charging. That's quite a bummer. I mean, you get one of the most exciting cars in the EV world and then you're pushed back to an ice so quickly. Yeah. She was so frustrated with having to charge going up in the mountains. And honestly, she probably should have bought a Model Y, but she went for like a cheap used car and, um, but, you know, it was all down to the charging experiences she's had with her ID4. She just took it on a trip uh, up to Wyoming, out into Utah. And she's like, every single station, we had derated chargers, lines, two of four stations weren't working. It's just, she's like, I cannot depend on getting from A to B in my Volkswagen using the Volkswagen network. So I'm glad to see Volkswagen changing it. I hope Pablo and, and others at the company truly realize how big of a problem they have. Even if most charging is done at home, you buy a car to get places. DC charging has to work. It does. And the only way path forward I see here is to to join Tesla because they have a great network. N- not a bad idea. And I don't think that necessarily being critical of the networks is all just negative, right? We, curiosity is key here. If you're going to be a leader in the EV space, whether it's a charging network or an OEM, go ahead and be curious, collaborate. Take a road trip, go try it out. Take a road trip, immerse yourself in it and see what the problems are and also where the successes are. And maybe one day we won't have to talk about charging problems in the US. It'll be a great day. But Pablo, when you're ready to go cross country in an ID4 with me, Let's do it. Can't wait. Thanks for watching another episode of the Out of Spec Podcast. What can they expect coming forwards? Coming forwards, I'm not sure exactly what we have on the roster, but um, I will be a consistent voice on the podcast. We'll have plenty of guests and interesting topics, and we're going to have content every day for you. And uh, it's going to be exciting stuff. Please tune in. Feel free to follow me on Twitter and or x uh, at hey underscore francy and tweet at me any great stories uh that you hear things that you're curious about um you know this is we're really trying to ramp up the podcast and uh again be curious about how we can improve so if you have any constructive criticism feel free to throw it our way yeah this isn't the podcast studio you're moving we're building a nice studio yes we're we're mid-move here um (laughs) it'll it'll only get better from here and yeah really excited to be a part of the team yeah, lots of good stuff and daily podcasts, not necessarily starting tomorrow, no. but by October. Yes. Thanks for watching. See you later.